For example, in Pasadena, the Pasadena Roadster Club hung out at Larry and Carl's, uh, a drive-in across the street from the Pasadena Junior College. The club would have their meetings on Wednesday night, and then after the meeting, uh, roughly at 9 o'clock, they would a number of them would show up at Larry and Carl's. And of course, it wasn't long before roadsters from other areas uh, discovered that, and so they would drop in at Larry and Carl's on Wednesday night, and uh, generally we'd uh, end up with somebody saying, gee, why don't we race these two cars or something like that. And so, uh, typical, this would, be, this would be around 46, 1946, 47 area when hot rods were just roadsters. There were very, almost no coupes. And then coupes weren't even considered hot rods at the time. And so on that night, you know, 9.30, somewhere in that period, you'd have probably a half a dozen to a dozen roadsters pull out, followed by maybe 30 or 40 civilian cars. And they'd, they'd go out to uh, one of the streets they'd chosen to race. and. Uh, very popular for there was to go out to Saramanta Boulevard, which was uh, fairly deserted. And actually it was a split boulevard with two lanes on one side of car tracks and two lanes on the other. And the two lanes on the north side were, went nowhere basically. They went up, not to a dead end, but uh, they ended at another street, a T intersection. So there was no traffic on it at night. So the cars would go up there and uh, uh, the two cars that were going to race would would get up at one end of the street and a bunch of cars would be parked off to the side and the spectators usually get out of the cars and watch, you know, and uh, almost like you were at a professional drag race, you know, except here it was at night and it was illegal. And uh, the cars would race down and then very often race back. And uh, Sometimes there would be another car that would say, hey, I'll race the winner, and you may have some more. It depended a little bit on where it was. If it was pretty far out, then uh, you could race there for, for a while without any problem. If you were close into town and there were homes in the area where somebody might call the police, then you probably would get back out and, uh, after just a couple of races. And uh, typically there in Pasadena, you know, the cars would race two to four races. And then they'd, most of them would go back to Larry and Carl's and analyze the results, you know, and this type of thing. And it was a fun deal. It didn't hurt anybody, hopefully, you know, and it made some noise and uh, made the police irate and, and all that stuff. But it was fairly common. Uh, there were some places uh, down in Los Angeles and up uh, in the San Fernando Valley and also in, in uh, Puente, which was... Uh, out in the San Gabriel Valley, where people could race almost all night. There was a road to 46 area in Puente, uh, Fifth Avenue, where you could just go out there after dark and there would be cars there racing and you could watch and you could race and you could watch and, and uh, cars may stay there for two or three hours and race. And it, it was a terrible road, incidentally, a very narrow road. Did Hold on. Sorry, yes, yeah, an aeroplane. You raced. I've got an image in my mind, which is probably completely wrong, of that drag race in Rebel Without a Cause. Hold on for a second, wait for this car to go by. Uh, hey. Hold on for a second. Okay. Anyway, the, the whole premise is that the guy who did the drag race was the cool guy who got the woman. Um, was, oh, yeah. what, how did you see, the, were there certain races who were the hard, the hard guys, or was it everyone? It was everybody who was interested in the mechanical parts of the car, you know, who wanted to work on their car and try and make it go faster. And once you've made it go faster, uh, you sort of like to take it out and test it against somebody else's car that they tried to make go faster. So you really had a broad cross-section of guys. There were guys that were uh, really uh, I don't know, easy going guys. There were, there were guys that were rough guys, you know, by the standards and, and everybody in between.